Every tsunami stage explained in 12 to 20 minutes. Level 0. The ocean looks calm. Waves roll and retreat. Nothing unusual. But beneath the surface, faults grind. Tectonic plates jam together. Locked, strained, waiting for release. Years pass. Decades, centuries, the pressure only grows. Above, life carries on. Fishermen cast nets. Markets bustle. Children chase each other along beaches. Tourists take photos. The sea looks eternal. But it is never still. Deep trenches cut across the seafloor. Subduction zones swallow plates whole. One slab slides beneath another. Sediment piles up. Stress increases. Every centimeter of movement stores energy. That energy will not stay hidden forever. Mountains on land reveal their history. Layered rocks. Fossils of marine creatures stranded high above the shoreline. Proof that the ocean has climbed inland before and will again. On some coasts, silent markers remain. Ancient carvings, stone markers and oral warnings. Placed by ancestors who witnessed earlier floods. They warned, do not build below this line. But memory fades. Warnings erode. New generations forget. Houses return to the shore. Cities rebuild where they were destroyed. Until the cycle begins again. Level zero is loaded silence. The spring wound tight. The horizon masking violence. An ocean that pretends to be gentle, but isn't. Respect the land's memory. If a place has drowned before, it can drown again. Education and drills save lives before water even moves. Level 1. The trigger strikes, the lock snaps. A massive earthquake tears through rock. A volcanic flank collapses into the sea. A mountain of sediment slides down a trench. The seafloor heaves upward or drops downward. Water above is forced to follow. Columns of ocean displaced in seconds. Energy bursts outward, not in one direction, but in all directions. A pulse born in silence. A wave invisible to the eye. A signal traveling faster than a plane. The water itself seems unchanged. No towering crest yet. No roar of white foam. Just the same surface. But beneath, trillions of jewels race outward, each pulse carrying the force of countless bombs. This is the moment of birth. The second the ocean transforms into a weapon, and no one on land even notices, level one is invisible violence, a wave unborn to the eye, but fully alive in motion, seismic networks and volcano monitoring matter. If the ground shakes near the coast, treat it as a trigger. Don't wait for confirmation. Move to high ground. Level two, the wave races into deep water. Here it changes shape, not a towering crest, not a crashing breaker, but a long, flat swell, barely visible, less than a meter high, but hundreds of kilometers long. It travels at speeds comparable to a jetliner, hundreds of kilometers per hour, 700, 800, a giant sprinting across the ocean. Ships don't notice. A freighter crosses right over. The crew sees nothing unusual. A fishing boat continues hauling nets. Oblivious. The wave does not weaken. It does not lose strength. In deep water, energy spreads with little friction. It crosses entire oceans. One shore is struck within minutes. Another shore, thousands of kilometers away, is struck hours later. The ocean hides it well. Just a pulse. Just a swell. Nothing a human eye would suspect. Level 2 is a silent sprint. A giant in disguise. Waiting until the seafloor shallows to reveal itself. Deep ocean pressure sensors. D-A-R-T boys. Detect these swells. They send alerts by satellite. Without them, Level 2 remains invisible until it is too late. Level 3. The ocean begins to betray itself. The wave slows as it nears shore. The front edge stalls, the rear edge piles up. Energy compresses, height increases. The shoreline feels it first. Tide gauges spike. Currents twist in harbors. Anchored boats lurch violently. Sometimes the sea level surges upward. A sudden rise, a flood arriving before the main wave. Sometimes the sea drains away. The waterline retreats, the seabed lies exposed, fish flop helplessly. Rocks glisten where water should be, people gather, they point, they cheer. Children run onto the exposed flats, they pick up stranded shells. Tourists film the spectacle, they do not realize the truth. The retreat is not safety, it is the breath before the strike. In minutes, the horizon lifts, what was flat becomes a rising wall. The sea that disappeared comes rushing back with multiplied force. Level 3 is the final warning. 
the ocean screaming through unnatural tides, strange behavior, a signal ignored by many, a fatal mistake. If the sea rises or recedes suddenly, run. Don't film, don't stare, don't wonder. Higher ground is the only safety. Level 4. The first wave strikes. Sudden, violent, unforgiving. It doesn't need to be the tallest. It doesn't need to be the strongest. It is enough. The shoreline disappears. Streets become rivers. Cars lifted like driftwood. Boats hurled inland. Bridges collapse. Buildings crumble under the pressure. Foundations rip free. Walls cave in. Wood splinters. Steel bends. The water surges with the strength of a moving mountain. Everything caught in its path is carried inland. Some rise with the water, floating until struck by debris. Others vanish instantly beneath the surge. The roar is deafening. The ground trembles. The ocean has arrived. Level 4 is the first blow. The undeniable strike. The ocean revealing its true face. When the first wave hits, never assume it's over. Run uphill. Stay uphill. Do not return until authorities confirm safety. Level 5. The water retreats, but not gently, not calmly. With violence, the surge that flooded streets now rushes back to sea, dragging everything with it. Cars, trees, houses, people. Survivors of the first wave are swept away in the withdrawal, currents too strong for any swimmer. Rivers reverse, harbors empty, buildings tilt as foundations wash out. Debris becomes weaponized, planks, glass, metal, all dragged along at lethal speed. The retreat looks like the end, the ocean pulling back. The danger finished. But that belief is a trap. Level 5 is deception. The false pause. The sea is not done. It is only reloading. Never step back to the shore. Stay inland. Stay uphill. The drawdown is as deadly as the surge. Level 6. Successive waves arrive. A tsunami is never one strike. It is a series. Minutes apart, sometimes hours apart, each surge pushes further. Each surge tears away what the last left behind. The second wave may be larger, the third even stronger. Walls collapse that survive the first. Roads buckle, high rises sway. Those who return between waves are trapped. Those who wait near the shore are erased. The rhythm is merciless. Surge, retreat, strike again. The cycle repeats until the ocean's energy runs dry. Level six is prolonged destruction. Not one blow, but a beating, wave after wave until nothing remains. Never return after the first strike. Wait for the official all clear. Multiple waves are the rule, not the exception. Level 7. Urban destruction. The wave doesn't just flood, it dismantles. Concrete is no shield. Steel bends under pressure. Roads vanish beneath churning rivers. Gas lines rupture. Explosions ripple through drowned streets. Fires burn on water where fuel and oil have spilled. Power grids fail. Electricity arcs into rising flood water. Darkness follows. Sirens fall silent. Hospitals fill within minutes, then collapse under the surge. Entire neighborhoods turn into floating wreckage. Towers designed to last centuries buckle in hours. Stadiums, bridges, airports, all swallowed in the chaos. The tsunami becomes more than water. It becomes demolition, a city dismantled piece by piece, a metropolis reduced to fragments. Level 7 is collapse, the line where civilization crumbles under raw force. Build higher, reinforce critical structures, design vertical evacuation towers strong enough to outlast the flood. Level 8. The wave doesn't stop at the shoreline, it pushes inland. Kilometer after kilometer, farmland drowns, crops vanish beneath salt water, villages disappear in minutes. Highways turn into rivers. Cars pile up like driftwood. The further the water reaches, the more momentum it gathers. Every slope channels it. Every valley funnels it deeper. Flat plains become shallow seas. Flood water is more than water. It carries sand, mud, and silt. It buries homes in layers of debris. It poisons freshwater wells. Fields remain salted long after the water recedes. Animals flee to high ground. Some survive. Others are swept away with barns and fences. The inland surge leaves nothing untouched. Infrastructure buckles under the spread. Power lines snap, substations drown. Roads are scoured from the earth. Bridges collapse as torrents rip away supports. The land becomes unrecognizable. People flee uphill, but even hills are not always safe. The water claws upward, higher than expected. 
Villages built inland, thought to be safe, are swallowed. Entire regions cut off, surrounded by inland seas. Salt water changes everything it touches. Soil fertility gone. Trees wither. Freshwater ponds turn brackish. What was fertile ground becomes barren desert in weeks. Level 8 is reach. The ocean claiming territory far beyond its normal edge. The illusion of safety inland shattered. Preserve natural defenses. Dunes, wetlands, mangroves. They absorb energy and slow the surge when concrete barriers cannot. Plan communities beyond the furthest historical reach of the wave. Level 9. The human toll. Now it is not just buildings. It is lives. Drowning is immediate. Currents drag bodies beneath rubble. Those who escape face hypothermia in freezing water. Cuts, broken bones, infections follow. Families are torn apart. Children swept from parents. Communities scattered. Entire populations missing in one hour. Survivors cling to rooftops, trees, fragments of debris. They wait for rescue that may not come for days. Helicopters circle overhead, too few to help all. Boats search, weaving through floating wreckage. Each discovery brings hope or heartbreak. Death counts climb not only during the waves, but after. Starvation, dehydration, injury, shock. People stranded without food or water collapse before help arrives. Entire generations vanish, languages silenced, traditions lost, a culture erased in one morning. Those who live carry invisible wounds, nightmares of black water, guilt for surviving when others did not, communities hollowed out by grief, memories that last longer than ruins. Level 9 is humanity's breaking point. The scars it leaves are not measured in meters, they are measured in memory. Drill practice evacuation as if the wave is real. Communities that prepare together survive together. Level 10. The water recedes, but the disaster remains. Shelters overflow. Food supplies run low. Clean water disappears. Sanitation collapses. Disease spreads quickly. Waterborne outbreaks. Cholera, dysentery. Infections from untreated wounds. Families huddle in crowded camps. Survivors grieve beside the injured. Fear lingers in every face. Hospitals are overwhelmed. Doctors improvise with limited tools. Electricity flickers. Communications fail. Help arrives too slowly. Psychological wounds run deep. Children afraid of the ocean. Survivors haunted by memories. Nightmares repeat the roar of water. The tsunami wave is gone, but its shadow lingers for years. Level 10 is aftermath. The hidden disaster that begins when the water retreats. Stockpile emergency supplies. Train medical teams. Plan recovery for months, not days. Level 11. Environmental and economic collapse. The damage spreads beyond people. Ports destroyed. Ships sunk. Fisheries gone. Factories shut down. Markets crumble. The cost runs into billions. Entire industries wiped out overnight. Jobs lost. Families displaced. Nations struggle to recover. The environment suffers just as deeply. Salt water seeps into farmland. Soil poisoned for years. Rivers clogged with debris, wetlands smothered in silt, reefs shattered under rolling sand and rock, wildlife vanishes, breeding grounds lost, fisheries collapse, oceans turn murky with sediment and oil. Level 11 is the ripple effect. The wave kills more than lives. It kills livelihoods. It kills ecosystems. It kills futures. Diversify economies. Protect natural ecosystems. Resilience is the only defense when the sea takes everything at once. Level 12. Global Lessons. Every tsunami rewrites history. Warnings ignored once are heeded later. Scientific networks grow stronger. Technology advances after every disaster. Early warning systems expand. Seismic sensors link to satellites. Buoys float in deep oceans, sending silent alerts. Communication towers spread along coasts. Global drills prepare entire populations. Governments change building codes. Schools teach evacuation routes. Maps redraw danger zones. Memories shape new generations. Still, the cycle is never broken. Tectonic plates do not rest. Pressure builds again. Another wave always waits. Level 12 is perspective. The truth that tsunamis cannot be stopped, but they can be studied. They can be prepared for. They can be survived. International cooperation is the shield. Sharing knowledge, warnings, and drills across borders is the only way humanity stands against the ocean's most violent weapon. With this, we come to the end of our video.
see you in the next of the Saster.